What's going on everybody, it's Dilmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I would like to introduce you to a pretty cool tool called Kinetics, which provides a powerful set of AI tools for cloud infrastructure to create animation from videos, perform automated complex re retargeting, host emotes, and also all of these features work for games and apps across all major platforms such as mobile, also WebGL, VR, AR, and also standalone. Most importantly, all of these features are available through their new Unity SDK, which basically released a few days ago. And before we get started, I want to thank them for basically sponsoring this video. So Kinetics, thank you very much for doing that. Okay, so first, how can we generate animations and how can we do this with AI? Well, one way is to use Kinetics Verify Animations, which you can easily integrate into Unity. They have a catalog in which we can basically retrieve each animation, you have options to retrieve them by ID, you have options to retrieve them by a criteria, all by using their Unity SDK. Another way is to create our own animation through their Unity SDK by uploading a video, which is what I'm going to be doing today, and I'm really excited to show you that process. First, let's do a couple of recordings, which I'm going to start with. The first one is going to be a simple walk animation. We need those on every single game. So it's really important to keep the video very short between 10 to 15 seconds for each animation because it has to run through a machine learning algorithm. I'm also going to make sure that my body is positioned and my phone is aiming at the entire body so that the camera can see everything. Then we're going to be doing a fighting sequence and perform a few movements such as punching as well as rotating our bodies. All right guys, so I got a demo here put together which has three different characters. And the reason why I did that is because we're going to be using the animation from the Kinetics service by integrating their Unity SDK and then each character it's going to basically retarget and reuse the animation. So really powerful technology and I'm really excited to show you. So to set up their SDK, the first thing that we need to do is we're gonna go here into the package manager. And then if you go under, actually click on plus, go into a package from git URL. And the first one that we're going to install is going to be in the Unsoft. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy here a link and then go back into this and just make sure that you have git installed. If you don't have git installed, let me know and I'll be putting the basically the download link so you guys can get it installed. And then just go ahead and click on add. Okay, so it looks like they got installed. You guys can see that it's right here. And then let's go ahead and install that new input system now. Just gonna go ahead and paste that and then click on add. Okay, and lastly, we need to install the Kinetics Unity SDK. So just go ahead and paste the link. I'm gonna be putting that also in the description of this video. All right, so it looks like that got installed. So let's go ahead and check one thing before we keep going, go into build settings and then player settings. And we wanna make sure that it's, the project is set to use the new input system. So right now it's set to buff, which is fine. So just make sure that it's either the input system new or basically buff so that allows you to use both of them, but their implementation is based on the new one. So once you do that, then what we need to do, go into Kinetics and then Package Manager, and they're gonna have this installation. You can use Web2 and also, or Web3. I am going to be using Web2. Just go ahead and click on Install Core Bundle. Okay, so it looks at like that completed. Go into Kinetics UI Emo Wheel, and then go into Samples. And they provide you with a bunch of different examples, which is what I'm going to be using as a reference for this video. So the easiest thing to do is just double click on basically the quick start scene, go into sample script, and then just paste basically the key that they provide you, which is called the virtual world key. It's gonna be some pretty fine animations. I can, you know, I can look at that one, which looks really cool. I can say, okay, I wanna see a different type of animation. I can do maybe a stretching. And just know that these are not in the project. These are basically going and retrie getting retrieved from an API, getting downloaded through the SDK that they have, and then that calls into an actual web service. Another thing that you can also do, you can go here into the back, and let's say that you want to basically remove that animation, and you had another animation in here that you want to add. I can go back into the wheel and then say, okay, I'm angry, and that's just a different animations. Those animations are all basically generated. They could be generated from users, they can be generated from something called a studio. It uses a actual cloud provider to do that, which is cool because we don't have to build to be able to get those deployed. It's all coming in from an external source. So right now, each one of these characters, they have a collider. This one has a collider. 
They also have a light source. So if I go into this one and you can look at the light, it basically allows us to select, okay, which character we want to apply animations to. And that's what I want to show you how to actually code. So what I'm going to do though, is I'm going to be bringing in this actual Sam T pose final. Let's go ahead and right click in here. And then I'm gonna say it's gonna be character. And then this one, we'll just call it character manager. Then we can zero out everything in here. I already have a script for that. And it's very simple. It doesn't have anything right now. It's just basically a mono behavior. So if you go here on the scripts, you're gonna see there's really nothing in there. Just a start and an update. We'll implement that today. And then the character selector is just gonna have basically a rate cast that it's going to happen on each one of these colliders. And then based on that, it's going to activate the light. We can just do that and I'll leave this in here so you know how this works. But basically the way that it works is you can go into the documentation, which we'll put in the description and there's different ones that you can pull. You can pull that, you can pull this one and they give you an icon that displays what the animation looks like. There's also a gallery of very five animations that they have and there's tons of them in here. And this is the character selector that I implemented in advance. It's pretty simple. Basically on awake, I'm getting all the characters and I'm turning the lights off. This lights off method goes through each one of those characters and sets the ligand object to false. And then what I'm doing in here, I'm binding to the left mouse click. And then on every click, what's gonna happen is we're going to be getting, creating a ray, and then we're gonna be doing a ray cast against the ray that we are creating. And then if we are colliding, then, well, if we're colliding, we're going to be turning all the lights off and then I'm basically going to be getting the character component from the object that was hit. If it has an animator, basically this needs to be a question mark actually, because if we don't have, if we're colliding with something that we don't want to collide, like the floor or something else, what's gonna happen is as, so, as long as they are a character, then we're going to be basically turning the lights on. Otherwise we'll just ignore that. The other thing that I can also do though, is I'm going to be getting the animator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this landing here and then I'm gonna paste it in here. That way we can associate it. I know at this point it's not gonna be null, so I'll remove that question mark. We also can bring in that namespace. Right now, this is gonna need a virtual world key. So we need to, I need to provide you with that. And that's something that you can get from them once you sign up. For now, I'll just blur it out because this is, it has sensitive information. So I don't wanna share that. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna associate it to this character by default. which should be good to go. So let's go ahead and give it a try. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. All right, guys, so I got these running. Let's see if we can do the selection and then click on show emo wheel. And as soon as I do that, I can basically designate one of these animations to these characters. You can see that he's actually posing. Let's try that one more time maybe with the crying animation. Oh no, I feel bad about that guy. <laughs> about the one on the, let's try the cyber here. And then we can also Go ahead and try. Maybe I'll try a different one on this. Maybe we'll just do flexing arms. You can see how that, that actually looks pretty cool on him. Then I'm gonna do the same thing here on the Robo. And if you notice, I have two different animations that are the same. You can go in here and then basically remove this one. I have a chair bomb that I haven't tested. So we can go here to the back, go back into the wheel. And then what I can do is I can have maybe the Unity Robo just to the animation, which you can see if I do this one more time here, you can see that he is, the character is doing that again. And then let me try that one more time. I think it looks too cool. How about animation on this one, which is the default one that the kinetics team put together. And you can see that he's now, or, or she is posing in the view here, which looks super cool. How about we have this little guy here pose as well. We can do that on the little guy and you can see him posing as well. He's gonna be in a bodybuilder in the near future. And I have some videos in here that I wanna show you, one for idle, jump, and walk. So if I look at the idle, 
This is just me thinking of how the characters are going to react when they're idle. There's really nothing to do. Just raising my hands because I want to get some different skeleton data showing on those. Let's try the jump. And the jump is going to look like that. I tried to make sure that my body was in the entire frame of view. We could probably crop it. and I'm going to show you how we can do that with our tool. And this one is just going to be a walk. So it's going to be idle, walk, and jump so that we can try that on these characters. So how do we upload them? Well, we can actually do it here through the actual component that they provide. You can go into show emo wheel. And then you go into create. You can scan that if you like with your phone and upload them. I'm just going to use this link in here. You can make it shorter if you wanted to. You can make it longer. And the next thing that you do is just hit next. Idle Dilmer test. And then we got, we got to say that we have the right to use it, which we do because it's mine. And then no, it doesn't contain any hateful behavior. Just hit next. And then just agree to the terms and conditions and just hit proceed. All right, guys, so I got this running. Let's go ahead and test it on the cyborg. And then we can test it on the other characters. We can go ahead and go into the back and you can see here idle Dilmer test, jump Dilmer test, and also the walk. So we can go ahead and add it here. And then I can also add the jump there. And then maybe we'll just do the walk last. And then we can just click in here just to go ahead and hide it. I'm going to go ahead and focus on this guy and then select him. So now we can go ahead and say, okay, I want to do an idle, a Dilmer idle. So he is rotating and thinking about it. At some point I raised my hands. So let's see if you can see that that is working. So that's a pretty cool, you know, starting point of an animation. Let's try a different one. So this one, it's going to be the jump and then also the walk. Let's see the walk. And that, it's funny, it's kind of walking like I do walk. How about we try that on this guy? Let's try the the actual, let's try the idle on this guy. He's a little bit, you know, confused what's happening. And then he rotates to the right. And at some point he raises his hand, which is what he's doing. And then maybe we'll just do the walk on him as well. I mean, they're not really that fun. I'm not really a dancer or anything like that. So. You won't see something like that out of me. So let's try that on this character. And then we'll just do a walk on him and see, make sure that you select them. And then we can do that. And you're gonna see how that gets you going with a few animations. Let's try the idle. Idle, it's, it's sort of okay. I mean, it's not perfect, but the AI will get you started. And then we can do a cooler one with the ones that they provide in their catalog. I would also suggest to look at this recommendation page which basically tells you exactly what you need to do to get the best out of the AI when it comes to generating animations, such as what kind of clothing to wear, where to position yourself in a field of view. So just make sure that you look at that page, which I'll link as well below. There's also support to multiple languages. So if you want to change the language that is displayed when you open the emote wheel, you can also do that. And it's actually pretty easy to implement through their SDK. There's also support for themes. If you want to do a light theme versus a dark theme, or maybe you want to add your own style, they also support customization. And lastly, they also have events that we can bind to depending on the life cycle of the animations or when you register a local play animator, there's also an event that will get emitted when that happens. So if you guys like this video, please let me know in the comments and also be sure to check out their pricing. There's a free tier that you can access that will allow you to do what I just did today. And don't forget to subscribe because honestly, that's gonna allow me to bring you a lot more videos and make sure that you hit that notification bell as well. Thank you very much, guys.